stock point, Nine Super Pie was constantly on the hunt. But if he's still out for blood, he's gonna have to prove it through the losers. So for now, we're taking a trip down to the losers' side to see Syrup versus D Dog. Yeah, so right off the bat, D Dog just putting on full eighty one percent and putting Syrup into the corner and forcing him to find a way to be able to land. This matchup can be pretty tough for Ness uh, because some of his approach options can be quite telegraphed. D Dog is doing a phenomenal job of keeping him off stage and stuck in a corner and picking really good times to just get resources in such safe positions as well. Ness does not have the best mobility. In fact, far from it. And that is where the real struggle lies. Yeah, while I feel like in the realms of mobility, Steve isn't much to write home about either, I do feel like a lot of Steve's kid is very naturally acclimated to playing a very anti-air heavy game. Just a lot of the combo start buttons and a lot of the moves you see thrown out yep. in neutral just fit really well for telling Ness to stop playing the game. Oh, but has to be careful about those kinds of commitments. Is going to be punishing Syrup on all of that end lag of PK Thunder um, and just ends up losing a stock for it. But yeah, at, at this rate, like... D-Dog is just playing very comfortably in the corner, just playing back a little bit, and Syrup just can't find that in. You know, the name of the game here for Syrup is definitely to sit on some sort of lateral level with D-Dog. You don't want to be above him. But it landing on characters as Ness is kind of your claim to fame with a lot of buttons, and especially when you're one of the more aggressively oriented Nesses like Syrup is. No, so at that time, just going to magnet right into the minecart. D-Dog is doing a phenomenal job of just making the most out of these conversions. I have not seen a single stray hit. That hit, though, is catching Syrup so pressing all these buttons as he lands. It's just going to kill him for it. Yeah, no, D-Dog doing an exceptional job of just making sure that anytime they do throw out an attack, it's with purpose. And that's a very good mindset to have when you have moves as slow as Steve's. Because even though they're able to get a lot done, clearly a lot of damage yeah. and no struggle in the kill department, they're not really the fastest of buttons. Oh, so Rip had a good idea with the PK fire there, just slightly misspacing it, but now putting D-Dog into the corner. But I have to say, his out-of-corner options have been amazing. He has been spacing around PK Thunder so well, and just getting under and behind Syrup. Yeah, now chaining along the hits with these blocks has been working out phenomenally for D-Dog. And not once has PK Thunder really slowed down his game plan. Great parries on the up wow. smash, just like that, out of the corner in impressive fashion. Yeah, I'm surprised Sugup didn't like hold that up smash a little bit longer. It can put people into a nasty position. Uh, D-Dog that time just rolling past up smash. Still going to be able to shield it in time. And I have to say, right now it looks like he's chilling. Never he mind. Say until he falls into the clutches of Ness, gets back thrown, and it's a tight stock count. But percentage is not precisely where Syrup would want to land. I feel like any interaction here where Syrup is able to land some sort of falling aerial is where they want to be at. But I don't even know if they'll get that opportunity. Yeah, and Syrup again. Just keeps on directional air dodging, like whiffing a back air right in front of D Dog, and D Dog has been consistently with punishing him for it. Wow. This this entire game, I just feel like Sigup has just not found the way that he wants to be approaching. He doesn't really know how he wants to be breaking space, and honestly, that's a bit of a challenge in this matchup. Uh, if you know where to stand to be able to avoid like double jump cancel PK fires from the platforms, and you're sitting in shield, that's just shield pressure. Not as good as you'd think, and all of his approaches can end up being a little bit telegraphed and slow. So, in this kind of a matchup where you're fighting a resource management based character like Steve, you have to be the aggressor, and Ness doesn't always have the tools for that. I feel like another aspect of this play that Sir needs to really swiftly adjust when they can is figuring out their role of PK Thunder specifically. Yep. I feel like they were like 0 for 3 or 0 for 4 on opportunities where they tried covering some sort of option with PK Thunder with the intention of getting PK Thunder 2 going as well. But because of that, they ended up eating really big punishes from D-Dog. They can't really afford those types of situations. Oh, but D-Dog offstage with only one island to their name. Syrup is not going to be able to find the catch on the landing quite yet. You just have to be able to corner Steve and rush him down when he doesn't have that island. Because that island is going to be your minecart from the corner, and it's going to be your falling mix-ups with Anvil. Speaking of, we see it as the safe passage for D-Dog getting back on stage. But uh, trying to find out these bouts now that Syrup is comfortably swinging between yep. center stage and the platforms, it's looking like the resource management aspect is going to be a big part of D-Dog trying to turn this game around in their favor. And now you see Syrup is actually trying to cancel those PK Thunders a little bit too soon. But once again, D-Dog is using them as an opening consistently to get back onto the stage. These PK Thunders have not been doing much for Syrup at all. 
not at all. And I feel like if they were just willing to commit Ness themselves to moving forward and they'd have the option of those swift aerials that Ness is able to break out, I feel like that would be a bit more important than PK Thunder because right now this how slow that projectile is, is proving to be too big of a commitment because they're not only losing out on those little bounces, they're losing out on stage control and taking plenty of damage. Yep. But at the very least, they're able to get a catch with the smash attack and make things in their favor. I also think it's really important to note in that interaction, D-Dog did not have any island to his name. So he was forced to either go high with Uppy, which is reactable and punishable, or low in hope that Sugup lets go of Yo-Yo. So not a whole lot that he could actually do in that position. Sugup could be holding a pretty confident lead to himself right now. D-Dog is just going to have to get close enough to try to find the stock. Yeah, gathering resources while behind, not the best of looks for Steve because... Even though Steve is able to get together resources for moving that stock forward, they do need to figure out some sort of way to take back that stage control so that it's a safe enough decision. Diamond and gold already there. And one thing I want to highlight real quick is how well D-Dog's been moving around with the blocks. Again. Look at that. Ooh, and with the Elytra. Moving in quick for the up smash to at least even the stock count up. It's been consistently those PK Thunders that are giving D-Dog that opening that he needs to be able to get into and do some damage. And now this is the vibe check. Ends up SDIing out of the yo-yo because you can do that. But that time just ends up up being right into it. Still up from a pretty good lead in the beginning to a huge one for himself right now. All right, a full stock behind, but D-Dog's got the diamond tools built up. Let's see if they manage to be enough because <laughs> we oh, immediately no. just go to throw them off. Yeah, no. Really yeah. good return to stage from Syrup. We're fine. Mm -hmm. This ends up slightly mistiming that down tilt. Those are going to be big punishes, but Syrup drifting a little bit too far to the left is not going to find the fullest extent of that string. Drag down. Up. Oh, my. Syrup. Ooh. Syrup. I'm so sad that didn't kill. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, he did everything he needed to as well. That was just cool. Up tilt, not going to do it quite yet either. D-Dog needs to find a way to get out of this corner, but with no island on deck, that's oh. just going to be a four-liter, and that does it. He was caught on the block with the recovery frames of the empty down air. That's a shame. I, I, I really feel like that game, too, it was the make or break based on the resource management. Not having enough iron really did spell disaster for D-Dog at multiple points there. And on the fact that I feel like Syrup was much more comfortable with controlling the stage... And game three is looking like it could fall either way. God, Syrup is so cool. <laughs> everything, everything about that sequence. No bias, by the way. Yeah, no bias, not in the slightest. That P PK fire, drag down up here, down throw at a high percent to set up a platform tech chase, and then down there, up here, everything about that was cool. So Syrup going to be, once again, taken to a biplat stage. You saw D-Dog sitting under the platform, recognizing that all that Syrup wanted to do was jump on top and try to hit him with a double jump cancel PK fire. The name of the game, especially on Biplats, is to try to get under Ness and punish those. Yeah, although we've already seen that there's really no struggle for D-Dog to play from beneath Ness. Uh, like we saw in game one, a lot of uh, Steve's tools just very naturally set for anti-airing, for picking out of the sky, racking what up a that tech damage. Chase. Wow. <laughs> that was just it's not a... a kill, but it's a hell of a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. Who tries to get the parry punish from the PK fire, but by parrying a projectile, you don't get all that much plus uh, after the fact. So right now, D-Dog really going to be fishing through this kill a little bit. Uh, Syrup uses that as his opportunity to be able to land, and just about anything can do it. I love that conversion. Yeah, no, that was cute. And also really good DI from Syrup, making sure that didn't get too grim, but dash that managing to cover the air yeah. dodge too. That was such a good reaction from D-Dog. And that's exactly what you need to be doing to punish Minecart. You just have to throw out a preemptive strong hitbox and make sure it's hitting Steve's head and not the Minecart itself. Well, sometimes you can try to hit through that as well. Um, oh, no follow-ups quite yet. Uh, D-Dog a little bit too slow on it. Interesting. Yeah, no, that was a really sharp angle from the Elytra. I was kind of worried about D-Dog coming back up, but they managed to do so, drifting out from the PK fire, meaning they're going to live another day. But at 141, they have to be careful. I like the fact that D-Dog is just really focused on just dashing back and forth, mine up some resources, get ready for the next stock. And again, P Syrup just not PK firing anybody in particular, but you know what? Is able to get a pretty good up here and ends up cornering D-Dog after that magnet. There's going to be a huge punish. Tries to get the drag down, but a little bit too much horizontal drift and ends up crossing him up. God, Syrup, you're so cool. I'm such a stan. <laughs> uh, right now, I'm not going to lie. I'm trying to hype up D-Dog. Seeing the way that they have had like flawless reaction with mm. their aerials, countering out Ness's movement. This is like textbook play yep. for fighting off against. One of the best Nesses to come out of Tri-State. Yeah, no, Syrup's just doing a really, really good job, but D-Dog 
I, I love the way that he's been catching a lot of Sylph's landings. He tries to wait for that corner option, does it again, but not ready to compensate for the hitbox of back here. Sylph getting so tricky with his movement, and you just see D-Dog just trying to consistently shark, get under him, and find those punishes. Back air, the real MVP in this entire game for D-Dog. Just constantly picking off Syrup from the sky. And acting as a really good option, loaded to the ground too. Although it's back here for Syrup that manages to even things out now. Oh, Syrup right now tries to go for that big up hill. Ends up neutral, air dodging past all those hits of up smash. Such a nasty position for D-Dog. That is Ness Kornu pressuring you? I wouldn't want to be D-Dog. No, oh, ma'am. But D-Dog looking fine now, breaking away in neutral just to mine a little bit more, gets the workbench up. Let's get some new layers of tools. I think that's iron and swinging immediately, trying to end it all. I really like the fact that, uh, you know, Syrup didn't try to hold for there and end up just going to the corner instead of fighting his way back down. <gasps> D-Dog ends up drifting back. Oh my, this is such a nasty position for him right now. The back hit of up smash, gonna be mixing him up even with that kind of DI. He's still gonna be living. The fact that forward smash from Enderman managed to drag into the hit, oh no. that's just grim. And an excellent catch from Syrup. That's the 2-1 victory. Syrup going to be staying alive in this bracket, and D-Dog is going to be down in fifth place tonight. Syrup, when he's like a stock down and he's starting to make a comeback, is a monster. Uh, honestly, I really wouldn't want to be like D-Dog in that position. He tried to fish for a little bit too much for that kill. That little bit of extra rage uh, on that up smash really helped uh, Syrup to be able to close out that kill. Syrup was going for cool stuff, and I applaud that so much. Uh, I'm so sad that almost all of it didn't like fully connect all the way because of some of the inconsistencies with some of Ness's hits. That's Ness's issue, not a Syrup problem. He did amazing. I'm so proud of him. Um, but yeah, that was a really good comeback. He was down quite a bit. Um, I really liked the way that D-Dog was catching landings, but I feel like towards the end, Syrup started landing less on him and started uh, landing more 